Hello and welcome to a very, very special and a very, very green Lunch and Learn. Today we're going to be exploring the new Green for Micro program, which was launched during Enterprise Week. We're going to find out while, while going green for your business is good for your business. So with a bit of luck today, we've got some very super guests. We're going to find out about what exactly Green for Micro is, who's eligible for it, who it's for, and how to apply. So that's our plan of attack today. And when I say um, green business is good for business, I think this is really important. At the end of the day, we all care about the economy, but we all have to keep our businesses uh, afloat. And the simple reality is if we can go green and increase our profit margins or uh, and uh, bottom line, well, isn't that a no-brainer? Um, let's meet today's three amazing guests. I'm going to bring them one by one in from our virtual green room. So first up, we have the fantastic Kathleen O'Regan. There she is there. <clears throat> Kathleen O'Regan. How are you doing? Kathleen is an environmental advisor and green expert at Enterprise Ireland. So I think she's going to teach us a few things about uh, the Green for Micro program today. You're very welcome, Hi. Kathleen. Thanks, Greg. Um, look, it's great to be here today, and it's a great initiative for um, for micro enterprises. So I'm really, really pleased to be here today. Brilliant stuff. Well, it's fantastic to have you. Who else is in the green room? Well, next up in the green room, there he is. There, coming in with the big smiley face on it. It's Joe Low. Uh, who is Joe Low? Uh, I thought he was a rock star earlier on, but he's not a rock star. He's the head of enterprise at the local enterprise office in Leitrim, and Joe is quite frankly very passionate about the green agenda, but also passionate about working with businesses to help them save money, um, go green and increase their profit margins. So uh, that's a big intro, Joe. So no pressure there. You're going to be teaching yeah. those. Thanks, Greg. I, I won't sing a rock song for starters. We leave that towards the end maybe, but uh, thanks for go. the invite. Yeah. Um, no. yeah. I, you're coming from, we're coming from lovely green Leitrim at the moment. So listen, we all know about green here. So uh, yeah, delighted to, to join the conversation later on in regards what we're doing here in regards green for micro and what we're doing with local enterprises. Yeah. Thank you. Brilliant stuff, Joe. And then last, but certainly not least, one of the busiest men in Leitrim, or so I've been told. Uh, this is Pascal Gillard from Ginny's Bakery and Tea Rooms, I might add, also based in Leitrim. And uh, I think you got up at the crack of dawn, Pascal. You baked, you cooked, and you've been a delivery driver all morning, and you still made it here to speak to us. So you're very, very welcome. Thank you very much, Greg. Yeah, pleasure to be here again. Um, yeah, so getting up early is nothing new to a baker. Uh, my mm. wife is in the the tea room, so she's doing the cooking. So I think I'm I'm just uh, half half the team here because uh, yeah, the two of us are totally involved in the business, and and one kind of complements the other. So yeah, Brilliant. we've. Yeah, we can't wait wait to hear from you a little later on. You're gonna we're, we're gonna talk to you about you know what you've done from a green point of view. So what you've implemented uh, essentially, and how those changes have have essentially increased your profit margin and your efficiency. So I absolutely can't wait to chat to you a little bit later. You're very very welcome, Pascal. Thank you. So. Before we get started, I'm going to bring Joe in now in a minute, but but very quickly, here's my question for you guys. Hopefully, we'll have the answer for it. What exactly is green for micro?
Wow. Okay. It, it seems like a bit of a no brainer. This I'm gonna I'm gonna bring Joe in. Joe in here. Um, as ever, if you have any questions as we go through today's session, as you can see there, feel free just to drop them in the comments box and we'll try to answer as many questions as we go throughout the day or the session. Um, Joe, so without repeating everything that we just saw there, but this looks like a really, really good initiative. Um, what exactly is Green for Micro? Yeah, well, your, your caption really cap got it all there, Greg. Um, listen, Green for Micro is a new uh facility we have within the local enterprise offices in order to help businesses look at the opportunities and to look at what how you can cost save within the whole green environment. As you know, the local enterprise offices help small micro enterprises, less than 10 people. We go to a whole lot of sectors, that'll be through manufacturing, food, IT, all different sectors. And our main objective is job creation and sustaining jobs. So anything that we can do to assist our micro enterprises, create additional jobs, sustain existing jobs, create resilience in their companies, and ultimately create additional job, we're, we're delighted to help them. So that's the flexibility of the local enterprise offices. We adapt to what we see in the marketplace and to what the needs of our clients are. So throughout the whole country, there's been some pilot programs of Green for Micro. Uh, now we are happy to be able to uh, roll out a national scheme that we can uh, put through all the different counties. So pilot programs have worked very successful. And you talk to Pascal later on, he's one of our food companies here in Leitrim who has done the Green for Micro program. We have people in the tourism sector, we have people in the manufacturing sector. So we have a very broad uh, element of sectors which this is, is open to. So listen, we're, we're delighted with, with the opportunity. We're delighted to work with Enterprise Ireland, with Kathleen and all our expertise. And um, so it was launched by the Tonisha last Monday. So uh, we think, it definitely is in line with the whole trend that will be on a European or world national, as I say, green footprint, carbon, reduce our carbon footprint, and uh, probably in the turn, um, reduce our costs. That's, you know, reduce our costs, and it is a big element to this part as well. Yeah, I love that. So, so again, and I think this is a very, very important thing today. I think when when we hear, hear the word green and green for micro, we think, oh, well, I'm not a green business. So it doesn't apply to me. That's the first thing I, I would even think. So the reality is this is about every business practicing green practices and not that are going to cost them money, but essentially are going to, um, I suppose, help, help the environment. But more, more importantly, potentially help your pocket by actually saving you money. That's exactly it, Greg. And it's not just it's not just the physical engineering, it's it's the thought process as well. Mm. We have things looking at the circular economy as a new element, like you new thinking. How do I green my product? How do I create new products offering? How sometimes my supplier, I might be in the sub-supply chain, my my main customer might want me to green my process. So it's just creating that mindset, creating that awareness of the potential and the real opportunity. I think this is a real opportunity, Greg, for small mm. micro without imposing or restrictions or putting conditions on them it's a real opportunity for them to, to reevaluate their thought process about their business like exactly what you said let you be in IT let you be in food let you be in engineering this is a real opportunity to, to stand back free of charge two days free mentoring so it, it's a fantastic opportunity okay br br brilliant stuff okay so then, and really now during these very very challenging challenging covid times i suppose a lot of us are sitting there we maybe have a little bit of time to look at our carbon footprint for example which we wouldn't do if our business was was up and fully functional so i know it's a very difficult time for businesses but maybe this is our opportunity to embrace this that's absolutely brilliant let's bring in kathleen i know she's very very eager there so let's let's bring in bring in kathleen there she is um so, Kathleen, from from an from from an enterprise Ireland standpoint, what types of companies have been availing of enterprise Ireland green supports? So, what kind of companies? We were talking to to Joe there about lots of different companies. It's not green companies we're talking about; it's all companies. So, what companies have been availing your supports? Yeah, so I suppose the majority of projects supported by Enterprise Ireland to date are from you know food, construction, and engineering sectors. But in the last year, we've actually seen a broad range of companies look to improve their environmental performance from animal feed producers to pallet manufacturers, to manufacturers of consumer products, to you know digital technology companies, non-manufacturing companies. And this is reflective, I think, of the, the changing customer and supply chain expectations. So just for example, retailers are not only looking at the sustainability credentials of their food producer or supplier, 
but they're also looking at how the animal feed is produced and you know big corporations and you know medical construction and food and, and beverage sectors they're looking at how pallets are produced and, and and you know and can they be recycled or are they made from recycled materials and we've seen we've seen non-manufacturing companies or service companies then looking at their service and um, through kind of sustainability sustainability lens yeah, fantastic. So, I mean, guys, it could be anything as simple as not topping in your car, your diesel car, driving 120 kilometers for a face-to-face -face meeting when we open up again and actually um, seizing an opportunity. I think we have we have Dublin, Leitrim and Shannon today. I think we, we are in, or, or are you in Clare? Um, in Clare, County yeah, Clare. yeah. Uh, yeah. uh, County Clare, so County Clare, Leitrim, and Dublin. Now, if we do, all drove our diesel diesel vans to meet in the middle and to have a chat, uh, how inefficient would that be, and how much money would that uh, that cost us? So, absolutely amazing mm -hmm. stuff. Um, are you seeing an increasing uh, companies seeing the green the green um, I suppose agenda uh, being more of a priority right now? Are companies starting to put the green agenda as a priority? Are you finding? Um, yeah, I think it is becoming an increasing priority, I suppose, for companies. Um, you know, as I've kind of said there, we, we've seen a broader range of companies and sectors coming in looking for supports. Unfortunately, kind of, you know, there are obviously, you know, competing priorities. So it's COVID pandemic and Brexit. So it's a very, very tough time for a lot of people and a lot of business. But I think the pandemic has actually highlighted, you know, how vulnerable we are, how vulnerable our supply chains are. It has raised the awareness for the need for action to protect our planet and um, you know from a business perspective as well if we continue on as business as usual we will use up the resources of up to three planets by the time we reach 2050. so while unfortunately there there are competing priorities and you know this has caused delays for some companies in taking actions by no means all and it is becoming you know a more increasing priority for our companies in the past i think green credentials were seen as a nice to have Whereas now they really are a must have and, you know, there should be core, I suppose, to business strategy as well, not, not just an add on. So I think it is definitely increasing in priority. I think business, you know, want to be part of the good news story as well. They don't want to be seen to be doing nothing. They want to be seen to actually take an action. No, absolutely. Well, I think it's 49 percent of people in a recent study said that they're, they're going to prioritize purchasing from businesses that are applying green practices, that they're getting more consciously aware of who they're buying from and whether they're using green practices. So um, this is going to be a requirement rather than a must have, as you as you rightfully said. And uh, with Enterprise Ireland, has there been an increase in, in the last year? And I know it's been a strange year that we're living in now. Has there been an increase in demand for for, for green supports or yeah there's been an increase in demand and there's also been an increase i suppose um in the number of inquiries so while we've increased the number of projects we've approved we also have a kind of uh, a good pipeline of projects and um just an increasing inter interest in the in the program supports and as i said across a wide range of sectors Brilliant. And then what, what are the main businesses, business benefits for going green? So, I mean, that's that's the bottom line. So me as a businessman, yeah. I like the environment is really important. Don't get me wrong. Um, but what are the business benefits for going green? So there's I suppose there's many opportunities and business benefits and, and they will range from, you know, improved, improved resource efficiency. So using less energy, water and materials. This will then potentially lead to increased cost savings and reduce greenhouse gas emissions which will in turn result then in increased access to customers. So the business will be in a better position to win public and private tenders. They'll be in, in a better position to meet you know, changing customer expectations and they will have an improved corporate image. I think if a business is, uh, understands their environmental impact you know, of their product or service, they're then in a better position you know, to innovate or to, bet, to develop you know, new or improved products or services and to diversify into new ways of working with their supply chain and, and with their customers. It's, it's, um, it's a benefit to employees as well. And I suppose, you know, skills learned can be applied at work and also at home and in the community. And, it, and research has shown that it helps to retain employees and attract new employees. And, and you know, it can help to, you know, to lead to improved relationship, you know, with the local community. It would help to reduce risk and, and, and I suppose highlight the opportunities and risks can be you know, regulatory, financial, reputational, physical, and it will increase the resilience of the company then to climate change impacts and help prepare them, you know, for the economy that's changing. So help prepare them for the future economy, which is going to be a low carbon, more resource efficient economy. So prepare for the future. 
Brilliant stuff. Now, someone asked me a very technical, well, it's probably not a technical question. It is for me, though. Uh, it was a term. They said, they said, Greg, what is the what is the triple bottom line? What's what is what is the triple bottom line when we start talking about green? As in, as in, I suppose, people are profit and, and, and planet. So it's not just focusing, you know, on the profit side of it, but also taking into account your you know, your people and your the environment the planet or, or, or we could flip that it's not only the the the, the people and the planet but also the profit side as well mm. if we're a business mm. person so the three things working yeah. together i suppose makes makes a yeah. lot of sense now that that that's brilliant um great stuff um so how can businesses use the green micro support so this is a very exciting support but i mean how can i physically use it mm. so i suppose business can use the, the green pro micro support to you know, avail of advice and uh, technical support to identify opportunities, you know, for cost, resource, so energy, water, and materials, and um, resort savings and emission savings, or to implement a structured environmental management and reporting system, or to understand, you know, what is their environmental footprint or the carbon footprint of, the, of their product or service. It can be difficult for companies to know where to start or if they have started, you know, what to do next. And this support enables business to avail of expertise to help them make you know more informed decisions so as to kind of reduce costs and lower their carbon footprint as well as improved environmental profile of their business you know in the marketplace so there are great opportunities for business to grow in the low carbon economy and by acting now they can ensure that they have the right product or service in place and in green credentials so on the actual green for micro application form yeah um, um, <coughs> sorry the company you know, they will be asked to select, you know, what is their main area of interest? And um, they kind of have many different interests. And thanks, Greg, there for sharing the slide. So the company may be some more supported in more than one of these areas, depending on the nature of the business and, and a time allows, allows. But I'm actually going to go into each one of these areas now, just to explain them in a little bit more detail as to what we, what, you know, what's actually meant by them. So we have a resource efficiency assessment, renewable energy potential, environmental management, carbon or environmental footprint, circular economy, eco-design, sustainable logistics, sustainable packaging, communications, and I'll give an a few examples of other. So it's a wide range of activities. So I just, you know, like to take the time just to kind of explain what, you know, what is meant by each of these. Mm -hmm. So the companies can really think about, you know, how, how best to avail of the supports, you know, for themselves. Yeah, because I don't think we know where to start. I think that's mm. the problem with small businesses. We don't know where to start. Yeah. And I would imagine, you know, Joe would probably say this when we chat a little bit later, but maybe your starting point is just reaching out and talking to your local enterprise office in the first place. Yeah. Um, but this is this is fantastic because, again, when I think of green, I think of lowering your carbon footprint. That's the only thing I'm really thinking of. Mm. So lots, lots more to this. There is. And I suppose, you know, the first point, yeah, as you said, is probably to, you know, to contact your local uh, enterprise office and, you know, to appoint somebody on your team, you know, in, um, in your company, whether it be, you know, ideally, if you could appoint, you know, a team, but if, it, you know, if it's a small company, then perhaps a person, a champion to really lead and drive this kind of continuous improvement process and um, to take ownership of it. You know, and the first step, I suppose, is to you know, look at your own um, operations and see, right, okay, well, what opportunities are there to lower your emissions? And you could focus perhaps on energy, but also look at water and materials and understand, you know, what's your baseline? Where are you at the moment? And put targets in place and, you know, a plan in place as to how you're going to get there, make a commitment. And after that, then you can kind of look outside your own operations and actually look at your supply chain, your product um, holistically. But I'll go through, you know, each of these. So if we just move on to the next slide, Sure. And uh, if we just look at, I've, and I've combined the first two, so resource efficiency assessment and also kind of renewable energy potential. So typically, you know, you might actually combine these perhaps within within the two-day project. So <clears throat> now, apologies now for, I have a bit uh, croaky this week. So um, the consultant will identify resource emissions and, and cost saving opportunities. And, you know, resources are to include energy, water, materials, and examples of energy would include, you know, energy use for heating, lighting, um, you know, operating equipment, refrigeration, you know, transport. Opportunities then that might be identified will include capital projects, feasibility studies, you know, procedural changes, process changes, staff training and, and awareness. 
And just to give some examples then, uh, you know, of the actual opportunities, you could think of perhaps changing your lighting to LED lighting, you know, fixing air compressor leaks, um, changing old motors, uh, installing water harvesting, you know, reducing waste to landfill, reducing your material use. On the renewable energy side, then the consultant will assess the business and site energy usage and, you know, recommend the most appropriate renewable energy system for your business. And all renewable energy technologies can be considered, including solar panels, heat pumps, biomass boilers. So the consultant will develop you know, a register of opportunities, and this will show you what are the resource, so the energy, the water, the material, what are the resource, what are the emissions, and what are the cost savings. And they will outline then you know, what the project will cost and what the payback will be. So there will be a mixture of uh, projects identified and, you know, some will be short term, some will be long term, some will be low or no cost that you can implement straight away and some will have higher cost. So there'll be a mixture of opportunities identified. Um, so, for example, if it was to install LED lighting, you know, you know, what will the cost of this be and how many years then will it take to actually kind of pay it back? So next slide there, please, Greg. Brilliant. I'm being your virtual clicker just in any okay. so so you left your clicker in Dublin and you're in player. So just in case anyone's watching, I'm I'm Kathleen's virtual clicker. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Greg. So just moving on then to an uh, you know environmental management. So an environmental management system will help you to prepare, you know, will help you to manage, to measure, manage, and report based on the kind of plan, do, check, act, continuous improvement philosophy. So the consultant will come on site and will review your environmental activities and practices. They will help establish you know, what your baseline is, so a baseline assessment and establish key performance indicators that you can then monitor. And they will give suggestions then for you know, the format and frequency of reports. They will assist with the preparation of an actual management system, a basic environment, you know, management system, and just have that structure and framework in place you know, based on the, the, the PDCA, the Plan, Do, Check, Act philosophy. They will provide advice and risks and how to mitigate them. And you know, your two-day project could be a combination of the first three activities, as I've just hi highlighted there, you know, if time al allows. So just moving on then to the next slide, Greg, thanks very much. Um, or you could decide to use the support to gain an understanding of you know, what is the, the carbon or environmental footprint of your product, your organization, or your service. So the consultant will show you how to assess, you know what your carbon or environmental footprint is. So you can identify environmental hotspots to focus on and it, you know, understand what your emissions profile is. So you might ask, well, you know, what is the difference between a carbon footprint and an environmental footprint? There's a lot of terminology kind of thrown around in the whole kind of climate sustainability space that sometimes it's not straightforward as to you know, what, it, you know, what it actually means. But a carbon footprint measures the most common seven greenhouse gas emissions. And I'll show you these on the next slide. It's represented as a carbon dioxide equivalent, CO2e. Um, whereas an environmental footprint is based on a life cycle assessment. And this is a standardized method, it's known as an LCA, for assessing the life cycle impact across up to 20 different impact categories, including carbon, but also water depletion, eutrophication, toxicity. So a carbon footprint is actually a subset then of a complete you know, life cycle assessment or environmental um, uh, impact assessment. So if we just move on to the next slide, I'm getting very um, technical here, but I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll try and explain it as best I can. So don't don't get scared here. So this diagram is from the Greenhouse Gas Protocol, and it's most widely used in international accounting tools for, which is the most widely used international accounting tool for greenhouse gas emissions. And it was too complex for you know micro enterprises, but the terminology used is universal when it comes to talking uh, you know about carbon footprinting. So I'll just explain it a little bit. Um, in the middle, we have the reporting company, and that's in green. And on either side, then in purple. So on one side, we have the upstream activities, and this shows your purchase goods and services. And then on the other side, we have the downstream activities, which is the use of the product, and that's in purple as well. So the greenhouse gas protocol describes three types of emissions, scopes one, two, and three. And scope one are the direct emissions, that are owned or controlled by your company. So fuel combustion, company vehicles, there could be fugitive emissions, examples from you know, leaks from refrigeration. Scope two then is the indirect emissions, and this is from your purchase to electricity and for steam, heating, or cooling, for you know, for your own company use. <coughs> Scope three then are the other indirect emissions that occur in a company's value chain. So the upstream and downstream, the purchase goods and services, 
the use of sold products, the waste disposal, the transportation and distribution, employee commuting. So accounting for all these carbon emissions can be a very complex task. But if you're just looking at your operations, calculating a basic carbon footprint can be more straightforward and is straightforward. So I've just given an example here of two free online carbon footprint calculators and they're free to use. So they will just, you know, they're a starting point and they will give you an estimate of your carbon footprint of your own operations without looking at kind of upstream and downstream. Yeah, so, it's a, so it's a good starting point. Brilliant. There's, there's one there just at the bottom of the screen. So you go, just if you're, if you're struggling to write all the ww dots it's simply it's bitly bit.ly forward slash my carbon calc so you can just take that down very quickly if you need it, or take a photograph that will take you to one of kathleen's recommended carbon footprint calculators so they're really really cool resources so that's bitly bit.ly forward slash my carbon calc great that's brilliant thanks greg so as I said, you know, it will give you an estimate of your of your carbon footprint and you'll have all the, the information that you to input into it. So if we just move on to the next slide and this slide then shows the emissions split in those three scopes I spoke about. So the supply chain is scope three and that's shown in green and um, electricity and um, scope two is in light blue and then your own operations scope one is in darker blue and the chart is split into raw materials on the left. So, you know, those industries, cement, steel, you know, mining. Um, and then on the right, we have end products where you might fit in. So it's fast moving consumer goods, fashion, food, automotive. So on the left, the raw material industries, you can see that most of the emissions are coming from operations. So scope one, you can see there in the, in the dark blue. And on the right, the end products, for example, the fast moving consumer goods, the fashion, the food, the automotive, most of the emissions are actually coming from the supply chain. So depending on your project, so for example, if you're in food sector, approximately 83% of you know, the carbon footprint of your project is coming from your supply chain and not actually your operations. So that's why companies are focusing on outside of their operations and they're also looking at the supplies chain upstream and downstream. So it just kind of gives a nice illustration. So if we just move on to the next slide there, Greg, please. I like this slide um, and I always think about it when I'm having a cup of tea. So it just shows a um, carbon footprint of uh, Puka tea bags. And it's just for illustration purposes again. So you can see here that 25% of the tea bags carbon footprint comes from the supply chain. 10% comes from logistics. 3% comes from you know, the offices and warehouse. 2% from distribution. 49% comes from actually boiling the kettle. And I always think about this when I am making a cup of tea. So to make sure I don't put too much water into your kettle and don't hit reboil, boil it when you're ready. Um, and 11% comes from end of life, um, which is the carbon impact of you know, recycling, composting and disposing. So the scope of this carbon footprint is, you know, the full scope is from crop to cup and it's scope one, two and three. And it covers the company's you know, own operations and their value chain um, upstream and, and downstream. So it's just, just to give you an example of one. So Super. We'll, we'll, we'll add that to the comment section a little bit later on on Facebook if anyone's um, wa wanting to to grab that particular example. It's a super one. Yeah, and we are we can all relate to the, our cup of tea. <laughs> Absolutely, one hundred percent. And so, just moving on to the the next slide. So this is kind of looking at the environmental footprint or life cycle assessment, and I've included this because. Um, I think it will be important to some of you, you know, from a marketing perspective and also from, you know, improving um, your project because environmental labels are used, you know, to promote and market projects. So there are three different scope options when carrying out a life cycle assessment. So there's cradle to grave, cradle to cradle, cradle to grave and cradle to gate. And these are shown on the diagram on the left. And the inner circle shows the project life cycle. So from raw material at the top, to manufacturing, to distribution, to use of the product, to disposal, and then potentially to reuse. Most life cycle assessments are actually the smaller part of the cradle to gate assessments, because the cradle to grave and the cradle to cradle are very complex assessments, and they do require a lot of modeling and assumptions of use. And um, so, you know, a lot of the, the data out there at the moment is on that shorter assessment. So it's on the cradle to gate assessments. But this is still very useful information. And this 
and can be used to make a product or service more sustainable by highlighting the hot spots to focus on. For example, it's no point to business, but, you know, spending all their time and resources on improvement activities that actually only account for less than 5% of the emissions. So it's really to identify what the hotspots are and focus on those. And as I said, they can be then used you know, for marketing and promoting your product. Life cycle assessments are often used to generate environmental project declarations, EPDs. So an environmental project declaration is a declaration by a manufacturer of the environmental footprint of their project. They're used in all sectors, but we're commonly seeing them used as in the construction sector at the moment, and they're often requested by architects and you know developers um, for building projects that meet different requirements, such as the BREAM certification or LEED certification, which are environmental sustainability uh, certifications for buildings, or in certain countries, they're required for submitting public tenders at the moment. So this two-day support you know, won't be enough to generate an EPD, but it will enable you to understand the life cycle assessment and to identify then hotspots to actually focus on for your, on your projects. So if we just move on to the next slide there, please, Greg. So I'm just going to move on now to circular economy. And circular economy, and you'll hear this word a lot, um, I suppose maybe used you know, recently, it's a bit of a buzzword at the moment. So it means, you know, moving away from the current take, make, waste, linear economic model to a more circular model that minimizes waste and, and pollution by design, by keeping products and material in use, and by, you know, regenerating or renewing natural systems. So the consultant will help, you know, you to prepare a plan to identify and develop circular economy ideas for a more circular project, you know, process or service. And I've included a quote here, and I like this quote, it's from the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, who are renowned experts in the whole area of circular economy. And it was a report that um, was produced in September 2019. But basically, switching to renewable energy or becoming more energy efficient will only cut greenhouse gas emissions by 55%. The remaining 45% actually comes from how we make and use products and how we produce food. So 45% of emissions come from how we make and use food. So becoming more energy efficient and switching to renewable energy will only do so much. We need to become, we need to embrace the circular economy. And the circular economy is based on, and we're all familiar with reduce, reuse, recycle, but it's also based on refurbish, remanufacture, repurpose, repair. It's based on the sharing economy that ultimately keeps materials and components and goods in use. And, and, Jenny's Bakery and, and its case study and, and Pascal will probably talk about it a little bit later, but they've given great examples in their case study, you know, of, of the circular economy without actually calling it the circular economy. So recovering waste heat to heat their vegetable tunnel or heat water to clean the bakery and, and generating, you know, the compost, you know, from their uh, food waste to fertilize um, the salads that they're growing then for the, for the tea rooms. So just good, good, there's loads of good examples out there but it mightn't actually be called the circular economy. And you probably have examples. Oh, Pascal's going, no, what am I going to talk about now? <laughs> you've, just, you've just let all the cats out of the bag there. But no, that's brilliant. Um, and you're right. We don't know these fancy terms. They mean nothing to us. So it's about, it's about thinking, that actually, what does that actually mean for our business and breaking it down? Brilliant. So just move. Yeah, great. Thanks, Greg. So just moving on. Um, so I'm not going to go into as much detail with, with, with some of the other activities, but I'll just briefly mention them. So eco-design, um, so the consultant, you can get a consultant or a mentor to help you, you know, provide, to help provide advice, I suppose, in, you know, in, in innovative design for sustainability. So going back to the kind of definition for circular economy, it's all about, you know, getting in there at the design stage, so designing a product from concept or redesigning an existing product or service. You know, taking into account sustainability, sustainability packaging, and we all know that there, you know there's regulations requiring that all packaging, and um, you know, shall be recyclable, reusable by 2030. So the consultant can assist with developing, you know, more sustainable, innovative packaging, sustainable logistics, and there's more companies, you know, beginning to look at logistics now. They can provide advice to measurably reduce, you know, emissions and air pollutants, and you know, improve fuel efficiency. Communications is a you know, huge important piece in this as well you know to market you know your green credentials this can be internal and external so that you know you can get external expertise to advise on how best 
you know, manage your sustainability communications, your messaging and reporting is an important part of it. So just moving on there again, um, Greg, please. We're, we're getting there. So this is the, coming up to the last slide um, mm -hmm. on this. So sustainable strategy, so very important to have a strategy in place and to have it, you know, core to your business and, you know, not as an add-on. So you can get help with developing, you know, your policy, your objectives, your plans. You can help, help with aligning to national or global, you know, frameworks. And again, I'll, I'll, I'll mention Jenny's bakery and, Cas and Pascal, they use the, the green for micro to align to the board B origin green program. Um, a lot of companies now, you know, small, medium and large are aligning to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, or a mix, which are a mixture of environmental and you know social environment uh, goals that companies can can align to. Moving on then to green procurement, which is very important for businesses, green tenders. So we have you know integrating sustainability into your procurement and into your tendering process. Employee and customer engagement again, coming back to the kind of communications piece again. You know how to really engage your your employees and your customers. So creating environmental awareness and achieving that long-term you know sustainable behavioral change finally then climate adaptation so developing skills to identify you know what are the opportunities and what are the ris risks for your business in relation to kind of climate so there are other um, um opportunities i'm sure that you could get support with but we've you know we've tried to kind of cover as most as we can can with this so it's just to give you an idea kind of what th what these actually mean So this slide here then is and it's you know can it's on the other supports I suppose that are available, um you know to 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 yourselves kind of outside I suppose of the scheme, um and there's a lot of information here so it's just to it's just kind of I suppose look at something that you can take away you know with you so for example there's the you know the Modus Mentoring and, and, and Modus Innovation Award so you might ask well what is Modus so it's actually a, a circular economy training program and it's a joint initiative of Dublin City Council and the regional waste um, and the regional waste uh, management offices, and it's 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 a support that's available and the close date is actually coming up very soon on the 18th of March. And that's why I've, I've kind of included the closing date. But businesses can apply for up to three hours one-to-one -one free mentoring um, for tailored business advice on the circular economy, and or the, and they can also apply for up to and um, 2,500 euro to invest then in their circular economy project. So keep that in mind. Also, SAI, so the Sustainable Energy Authority Ireland, have supports. And if you go onto their website, you'll see that they have a free online energy training academy that you and all your employees can, can take part in. It's, it's, it's free and there's different modules you can do. They do run energy focused workshops. So again, this information will be on their website. They have workplace resources on their website and they have a number of financial supports that we worth looking at better energy communities sports scheme for renewable heat electric vehicles you know accelerated capital allowance irish water then on their business on their website also have business and um, conservation tips and they also run an online water stewardship program this is probably more for large water users but they do have tips on their website the epa then um, has, have a resource efficiency questionnaire that you can um, fill out and it will give you um, you know, suggestions of what to do. In relation to R&D, supports include the Innovation Partnership and Agile Innovation and you can contact your, your local enterprise office in relation to that. The EPA then have a, a Green Enterprise Innovation um, support for, for Circular Economy and they have a call each year for applications which micro enterprises can apply, can apply to as well. It's worth checking in with your local chamber. And I've just given two examples here from Dublin Chamber and Cork Chamber. So in Dublin Chamber have a sustainability academy. And earlier this year, Cork Chamber um, ran a modus circular economy program. The Lean Business Ireland website, some of you are probably familiar with this, but if you go onto the events section, um, it's updated weekly with lean and green events and webinars that are coming up. I've also included this website that I came across recently myself, and it, it, refer, it goes back to the the jargon and the terminology that we mentioned earlier on. So it's a cli climate jargon buster and basically ex explains climate terms in plain English. Um, it was developed um, by um, Kamala Nanog and, the, and with you know, help of the EPA and the National Adult Literacy Agency. And the explanations are designed to help describe ideas and concepts 
um, rather than say give you know strict definitions, but they are factually correct as they have been checked by the EPA. So there's an A to Z document that you can download and, and you might find that beneficial. It's also definitely worth checking in with your, your you know your third level local college just to see you know what courses are available. A lot of courses now are available online, which you know could be very very beneficial to you in in, in the um, you know that you could do it in the evening time or weekends. And also then to see, you know, what research and collaboration opportunities are there. And finally, then it's worth checking, you know, with Skillnet Ireland because they do run, you know, a number of different um, Skillnet programs. And I've just given the example there of the Lean and Green. And it's just to say as well that there will be more initiatives, you know, coming on stream um, as this becomes more, you know, more focused for for companies and um, to keep in touch with your local enterprise office because, you know, they'll be able to keep you updated as well as there's more supports made available. So that's that's kind of the, the supports in a, in, a, in a nutshell. Oh, I can't hear you there, Greg. Sorry, you're on mute. I was shuffling papers there. I didn't want you didn't want to distract you there. Um, but the big the big um the big website we want us to look at is localenterprise.ie forward slash green. So it's localenterprise.ie forward slash green. That's where we're going to find all the details on the physical green for micro initiative. So um thanks so much. It's nearly time to bring in the fantastic Pascal. He's been waiting patiently and hoping Kathleen isn't going to share any more of his secrets that he was going to talk yeah. about. But Queen had a question question um so quiva has asked for smaller service service smes who may have remote uh, workforces does implementing sustainable work practices as in communications customer engagement fit into this and i might bring joe in as well for that question i don't know whether um yeah um so can you hear me there greg you can hear you joe yeah yeah i, I think listen i think we're open to any um uh, as it's up, any less than ten employees, uh, you have to be six months in operating. Turnover less than thirty or greater than thirty thousand. So any project like that that has the potential to help sustain a bit of resilience in a company such as Quiva is talking about, yes, of course, it's a pilot program. We're here to learn as much about opportunities mm -hmm. that it can uh, deliver as well as. So listen, it's, we're learning both ways. So we're going to be delighted to look at, at, at all applications and, and assess them on their own merits, of course. Brilliant stuff. Thanks for that, Queen. But there's lots of really good questions coming in, which we'll, we're going to jump to at the very end, if that's okay with everyone. I do yeah. want to get pa Pascal in to hear about his story. I've also printed out the application form, which isn't too scary. Now, I did print it in recyclable paper, Joe, just in case you're wondering. But we, we might just discuss what's involved. You're not supposed it. to print it. You're not supposed to. I know, I know. I know, I know, but I needed to. I needed to just to okay. double check, double check. But anyway, um, slap on the wrist for me, Joe. You can educate me a little later about filling out the application form. Okay. So brilliant stuff. Thanks so much for the brilliant words of wisdom, Kathleen. We'll drag you back in to answer a few questions in a little bit. So let's bring in, let's bring in the man himself. There he is. There's Pascal. Can you hear us okay, Pascal? Yeah, loud and clear. Brilliant stuff. Now here I have a I have a bit of an intro for you, Pascal, uh, which you may not be able to see. But this this blew me away. This is from uh, this is on the local enterprise .ie green case study, um, and this this kind of rammed home the importance of green for micro for me. The areas of concern for me in terms of um, efficiencies we could you know improve in the bakery. Two areas of concern for me um, was the amount of food waste we had. Um, number one, producing it and then having to pay to um, get rid of it. And the other was the cost of producing the energy to heat the ovens. So we now have a five-year plan in place. We've identified areas where we can um, make savings. Just by making a plan and working towards it, last year we had um, savings of almost €9,000 in um, food waste. Now... My ears peaked up when I heard savings of more than 9,000 euros. So, so this is really important. The bottom line is we can go green and, and adopt, adopt green, uh, green efficiencies and still do it in a, in a profitable and sensible way. But before we jump into that, Pascal, tell us a little bit about the background of Ginny's Bakery in, uh, in, in, in Leitrim. So how did it start and how's the business getting on now? Yeah, so 
Thanks very much, Greg, for the introduction. So Jenny's, Jenny's Bakery is one of three businesses here we have. Um, it all started out with um, my wife, Sinead, who's also known as Jenny. It, her family have um, built self-catering cottages in the 70s. Um, they bought a house on the Carrick Road in Drumshambo. Um, they did B&B, &B, and Sinead's mum, she was very innovative. So um, she had German um, guests. She learned German, and the Germans convinced her that self-catering was a great way to go. So they built eight cottages, all named after each of Sinead's siblings. And that was in the 78, 79. Um, so it was a big risk to take back then. And I suppose we've been taking risks ever since. You know, they opened a restaurant to the public as well. That's our self-catering cottage website there. So yeah, they're in a horseshoe shape, all the cottages. There's eight of them. So Sinead helped out like all the family members did in the, in the business. She had a a great interest in the business. She got her education. She went into banking. She hated it with a passion. And uh, she actually left um, the banking and she took a job in Jury's Hotel. So she had she had the, the hospitality in her blood. Um, she then traveled to Australia for a year, like lots of Irish people have done. And she had a great time. She came back. She kind of noticed her mom you know, was tired and had aged in the year because she'd been away. And she said, you know what, I, I, I'm going to give mom a hand here for a little while. So that's what she did. She, um, but she found that there was nothing happening in the, in the winter time. So she was very good at, you know, the desserts, the pastries, the, the bacon. And a friend of hers convinced her to put a few bread into the local shop. So she just reluctantly did. Uh, she was very shy. Um, she's, She's an entrepreneur, but a shy one, and starting out a business and not wanting to um, let anybody know who was behind it probably wasn't the best way of going about it. So she called it by her family nickname, which was Ginny, in case it went belly up, nobody would know who was behind it. So it's amazing how a brand can come out of, you know, desperation as such. She wanted, you know, to make a living. She wanted to add some value to the family business. And my God, has it added value to it? You know, it's. It, I suppose after a few years, it was outperforming the the cottages. But our our basis was always good quality, homemade, handmade, and and we're still doing that to this day. So, um, I came on the scene in about two thousand and one, um, and Sinead hadn't started the 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 bakery business that she started that in two thousand and three, um. I was a little bit involved, but I was certification manager with the Irish Organic Farmers and Growers. I had a, quite a busy job. so But I used to help out and used to help at markets and deliveries. And, you know, I, the more I got involved with Sinead, like I suppose like any couple, our fear was we're getting on great. Will we kill each other if we go working together? But it's a big site. Um, there's lots going on. And Sinead just, you know, handed me the reins of the bakery. Now, I didn't know how to bake. And that was a bit of a problem coming into a bakery. But you know what? I adapted very fast to it. And um, we, I got on board with the local county enterprise board. They were absolutely brilliant for us. And we got some mentoring. We didn't know everything. Um, we, we, we actually only realize now how little we knew. But it was great to be able to take that risk and having the backing of the enterprise board in terms, terms of mentoring and in terms of, um, you know, capital assistance as well, financial assistance. It, it made the difference. It gave us the confidence to move to the next level. And the one thing, you, you know, you have to say about our business is that we didn't rush into anything. You know, we grew when we were ready to. We got loans when we were ready. You know, we got great assistance from the enterprise board, but we never took on too much risk. We were always looking ahead. We were always trying to adapt and innovate. Um, and any idea that we ever had here at the bakery, it was always um, supported by the, the enterprise board. And, and that was essential for us because, you know, one thing leads to another in a business like this. So we applied um, for the, the assistance. They liked our business plan. They had confidence in it, which gave us confidence. And then we got some awards. Again, brings you on to the next level. What do we do next? Then we could see that there was, in 2003, when Sinead started baking brown bread, it wasn't the coolest thing to be doing at the time, you know? So, like, lots of people were buying houses in Turkey and we were buying an oven, you know? So, like... It, it just it was it was it was a brilliant um, a brilliant thing to to do to get involved in food now 
you know, especially in COVID times, it, it's it's the, one of the winning sectors because, you know, people are eating. And a, and a bakery like ours that's producing high quality product, um, very little additives, uh, no additives and you no know, preservatives. Um, people are looking for something a little bit nicer and better because they can't get that luxury of the hotel. So like we did a stout bread for a hotel. We developed that into a stout bread mix. It won the best soda bread in Ireland, you know, through to help with the enterprise board as well. Um, it, it, it brought it, it, we, we, we applied to um, for a, an award that we went to a meet the buyer event that was organized by the enterprise board. We got the best product at that show. So all of these things help to grow the brand and grow the business. You're very, very modest, uh, Pascal, because it's a very difficult time for everyone at the moment. And it's, it's great to see what you guys have done is you have uh, adapted and innovated during COVID um, to, to continue to keep your business going. So even today, up cooking, deliveries, you know, adapting from supplying the hotels to actually getting out, um, get, getting out to the, to the customers, the people in Leitrim. So it's absolutely fantastic. Tell us about why did you decide to get involved in the Green for Micro program? Well, as I said earlier, my background um, was eight years working as a certification manager mm -hmm. for um, an organic certification company. So I had that interest anyways. Um, I met with Joe Lowe at a, an online trading um, meeting and um, I spoke to Joe about my interests and Joe was you know, really tuned into it and interested straight away. So he suggested maybe getting um, a mentor to come out to me. So they sent me, the Enterprise Board sent me um, Niall Kiernan from Global Green Consulting. And, you know, the things that I had in mind, <laughs> he was, it was great to talk to somebody mm. that was, I have a solution for that. Or I have, a, I, I know where you can make savings. I know what we can do to help you. Um, like we've only started small, you know, I, I, I know I'm, I'm uh, talking a good bit about, you know, Green for Micro now, but we have, you know, our, our, our minds and, and are behind this, you know, we, we're really interested in it. We've made some small changes. We've seen some benefits from those changes, which is great. Um, the mentoring was the first thing though. That was the key. Um, we put a five-year plan in. Um, we're probably going to get um, the origin green plan verified by board be in the next week or so so they're big changes for a small business like ours to make um so we said we'd start with small things we were so many years you know trying to grow our business and you know develop jobs in this area um and now it's time to step back a little and try and reduce our carbon footprint wherever we can so even since the the start of this program i'm learning more and i'm i'm thinking more you know even small things like we don't use the bin bags now we use the empty flower bags you know it's not a big change but it's less plastic going into and from even having meetings with the recycling company barn of waste and that you know a small thing like what's the point putting recycled packaging into a black bin bag he said the whole thing gets rejected when it's going so you've made all the efforts and you've fallen at the last step and it means product that you are segregating is actually going into landfill so small little things like that i suppose the um mentor as well Niall looked at the lighting um so we've um we're in the process of changing to led lighting and emergency lighting for all of the bakery that's you know it's a small step but it could make 60 percent savings on our energy bills at the end of it yeah. so um yeah, and you have a better lighting as well, um, faster yeah. to come on. And, you know, so it's it's a no-brainer, really. Win-win-win. Um, no, Definitely win-win-win, yeah. which, which is fantastic. So when you sat down with Niall, uh, what, were the, what were the areas that, uh, that you guys identified that you needed to change? So where was your starting point when you sat down with, with your mentor, Niall? I think the, the food waste was a concern. Um, so, yeah, as I said in, in, in that clip, we were paying to produce the food and then we we're paying to get rid of some of it. Now, every business like ours that's, you know, producing a product with a short shelf life is going to have waste. So from talking to Niall, we said, well, what can we do to reduce waste? So the composting was a big element of that. Um, but also, you know, you can make um, changes in your office. So what I'm doing the, the the plan for the week of what goes into each shop be a little bit more um concentrated on 
the quantities of products you're putting into to shelves. You know, the list, as we call it, is very important. Um, you don't want to leave the shop short, but you certainly don't want to be taking back too much product as well. Um, we got some different markets with product that we, we didn't have to take returns on. So like we had all the hotels and stuff, so they were using all the products. So there was zero waste on that side of the business, you know. And then we developed some longer shelf life products like the product that won the best um, soda in Ireland, we developed that into a soda bread mix. So it turned a six day shelf life product into a nine month shelf life product. Um, so that's brilliant. So all of a sudden we can now look at exporting. We're part of the enterprise board um, exporting um, study at the moment. So we, we were sending a little bit of stuff out to France. We learned that the hard way, a ferry got delayed with stuff we were sending to France and it lost three days. So shelf life was kind of, you know, half mm. by the time it got to France, but that wouldn't matter with a, with a, a, a mix, a dry mix product. So, you know, you learn by your mistakes. And I think the one thing when you have a mentor kind of holding your hand and saying, you know, if we do A, B and C, look at the savings. And when you see the savings, you know, it makes a big difference. Um, the, the, some of the food with short shelf life were involved in the local food cloud. So that goes to people you know, that are struggling at the moment. And there's also a feel good factor to that as well. So if we have surplus product um, that we send that with the, uh, it's collected on a Monday and, and there's a big need for it now that wasn't there in the past, but that's there now. Um, so yeah, yeah, there's, there's some of the big ones. You know? So lo loads and loads of benefits, which is absolutely fantastic. And, and we can't underestimate that, you know, it's a big selling point. If we are green minded as a business, we can use that as part of our sales strategy to attract people to want to come and do business with us. Because yeah, we, well, want to, we want to do business with green, green, green minded businesses. Exactly. So. Last last year, we were lucky enough to get selected by Aldi for um, the stout bread mix. So it was in 148 stores. Great publicity, great for the brand. Um, and this year, um, we have been selected again, which is brilliant. But one of the, the judging criteria that they were using this year was uh, about your packaging. Is it um, recyclable? So it's not just we're doing this because we want to... Um, you know, have, reduce our carbon footprint. The industry is looking for this as well. And I remember speaking to somebody when I thought about Origin Green from Board Bia, they said, why not get involved in this early? If this is going to be forced on you down the road anyway, you know, I suppose that was kind of ch change your, your, your thought process. So if like after having the chat with Joe already thinking about these changes, um, we just said, let's go for this, you know, and and there's great advisors out there you know the likes of um nile and there's an island in every county um yeah. you know they're there to to help you you don't need to know everything and and um but you can make a small few changes like for example the composting we've reduced our cardboard going into recycling because we're taking any plastic that's on it any tape that's going into um, a compost that we have with the grass cuttings from the self-catering cottages, um, the eggshells, the carrots, the bananas, all that stuff that we're doing. We do carrot cake, banana bread. So, you know, that that's a huge cost if you're trying to get rid of that in the brown bin. But to be able to turn that round and, and add it to your raised beds and then sell the salad in the tea room, it's kind of, I think the first day we sold salad in the tea room, it was only like, you know, 20 euro. But to me, that 20 euro was like getting 100 because, you know, it had kind of gone full circle for us. The passion, the passion. I love the passion. It's, the, you know, it's just oozing out of you, which is fantastic. <laughs> and I suppose it's 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 maybe like a, a drug of life when you start to implement these small steps and start to see the benefits on every level, financial benefits, environmental benefits, uh, marketing, marketing opportunities. Suddenly it gets very exciting. I'm sure it does. Mm. But, um, oh, I love that story. So I take it you're going to very much keep keep on the green train you know, what 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 what's next for you when it comes to your your your, your green your green agenda Pascal? I, I guess it's the biggest thing is the um the the heat recovery from the oven that's a big project that we probably would be further along um had it not been for for covid because mm. you know we really it's it's it, nile is going to work more with me that's in our five-year plan but yeah we're producing um, in the winter, like the bakery is cold when you come in in the morning and then we're heating up the ovens and that's all we're paying to extract the heat out of the bakery, you know. So 
to be able to recover some of that, even to heat the water is such would be brilliant. And um, the packaging, um, when we developed the stout bread and granola mixes, those pouches weren't, uh, it wasn't that easy to get recyclable, but our next print run, that all those pouches will be recyclable. Um, so to try and do more, it's it's difficult. There's there, the industry has a long way to go. We need some help with that, with the package inside of it. We know we're producing way too much plastic, and you know the the COVID has really you know affected that greatly because we were selling 120 sodas in Tesco on a Saturday unwrapped off a table. It was called the loose bread table, and um, added to fruit sodas, spelt cobs. And then when COVID came, that all had to be wrapped in plastic, you know, and right. yeah. It, yeah. and then it didn't sell. So we're, we're not doing that anymore. But it just, you know, I think COVID has, has affected um, the amount of, you know, plastic been been used by businesses at the moment, you know. Yeah, fantastic stuff. So, Pascal, thanks so much for sh- sharing your story. Oh, what I've got to say to all the, the, the listeners out there, I'm hearing... Um, marketing and business opportunities have been developed thanks to Green. So thinking of the, um, thinking of the Aldi opportunity, I'm thinking of the, the, the story, I'm thinking of the, the massive amount of savings that you've made on uh, food waste. And I'm also um, hearing the, the passion and enthusiasm for more changes that are going to affect your bottom line in the very near future. For everyone listening, as soon as we get out of lockdown, as soon as we get out of lockdown, let's all carpool on an in an electric car and uh, drive up to Leitrim and uh, and say hello to Pascal. Thanks so much for joining us, Pascal. Really Thank appreciate you very it. much, Craig. Thank you. Thanks so much. What a brilliant story that is. I want to bring in Joe now. Fantastic and incredibly patient Joe, who was yeah. wearing a mask a moment ago. I w- yes, Greg. Thank you. And I just want to thank Pascal. If we had just more people like Pascal, he's a great entrepreneur. He's an innovator. He's enthusiastic. He's just great. And he's just, if we had more people like that, uh, Leo clients. Um, but again, go back to seriously, what Kathleen and Pascal said, that this isn't a, an imposing condition. It's something full of opportunity. You know, there's huge opportunities. You know, so I think that's, if we got that message out, uh, Greg, alone today, I think it'd be terribly important. And again, the whole mentoring element of, it's one of the great services of the local enterprise office is the mentoring service we give. And this has been delivered through a mentoring service. Again, the person comes in, gives you advice. You don't have it's up to you as a promoter to take it on or not take it on. So it's 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 a huge uh, benefit and, and and a great opportunity. Super stuff. So 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 Joe, now this this is so it's so we're we're going after today. We're going to localenterprise.ie forward slash green. Um, let's let's talk about the who's who's eligible here. So who is eligible for this uh, this initiative? Okay, so the program is open to all micro enterprises. Uh, Greg is rightly has stayed there, up to ten employees, and and those are involved in activities that the local enterprise board regards as eligible. So, normally we de- deal with uh, manufacturing international traded services, but under this scheme, it's a wider remit now. So there you can see there's only a certain elements that aren't eligible. So we're looking at the tourism sector. We're looking at, uh, in fact, we've received an application yesterday from our local boat hire company, who's very much involved in the whole tourism sector. So there's a broad range in uh, construction, manufacturing, food there, as Pascal says. So all broad sector, as long as you employ less than up to 10 people, and as long as you're in business uh, for six months and you have a turnover of greater of 30,000 30, euros. So. Uh, listen, we're, we're asking people to get on, on our website. The application form is there. If you have any issues, get in touch with your local enterprise office. Uh, it's a pilot program, Greg, but we're delighted to be rolling it out now. We really feel there's a huge opportunity in it. Well, we're good. there's no turning back on the green the green agenda. I mean, it's it's vital now, so it's we're not going to go in reverse. So uh, it's a super scheme. Now, I have a question from Mark, and I'm, I I don't want to put you in the spot, spot there, um, Joe, but I'm going to anyway. Okay, um, so this is the so Mark Mark saying that the 30k turnover requirement is, is that a must? So is that is that the bottom line? So if a business has has um, got hit with COVID, struggling but looking at this initiative, and they're just under that 30k, um, should they speak to you? Of course. Listen, I always say that the mantra in the local enterprise office is always ask, Greg. Mm. We always encourage people to pick up the phone, always ask us. 
This program is one of, it's a national program, but we have other green mentors that we can give small sessions to people. But if it's 30 grand with well, the COVID, if he has 30,000 a turnover up the COVID times, that's, you know, that's fine. We're, we're, we're held to include people rather than exclude people, Greg. So always ask, get in touch with your local enterprise office. There's always some support that we can, we, we can deliver to you. Fantastic. So let's talk about this form. So I go to, um, I go to localenterprise.ie forward slash green and I don't print out the form like I did, even no. if I did on recycled paper. So that was a that was an absolute criminal thing that I did. So re serious shame on me there. Um, but the form's relatively straightforward. Uh, talk no. us through, talk us through the form form here because I think the problem with forms, Joe, is very often I don't apply because the form stumped me. So I would I would imagine if you're looking to apply for the green for micro scheme and you're struggling with the form reach out and talk to you i would imagine would be the best thing to reach do reach out to look get, get in, talk, in contact with your office the form yeah. we, we plan the form to be as simple as possible great yeah. it, it's kind of and technically it's a mentoring form we're asking for a small bit of information on it mm -hmm. as regards what your existing energy usage just small bit of, but that's good that, that that that's a good exercise for you to do yourself anyway but yeah we're looking for little detail you know you live that uh filled out in 10 to 15 minutes, get it submitted online. As I say, if you have any issues, contact your local enterprise office. We're too delighted to get in contact and talk about this, you know, so um, get get and talk to us. Fantastic stuff. So I see on the, the, the form is things like energy bills, water bills, waste bills. So it's all, it is relatively straightforward. It's actually a form, quite frankly, Joe, that I could probably fill out myself. So if it's, if, if I could do it, everyone can do it, trust me. So yeah. the, form, the form is the form is simple enough, but if we're struggling with it, reach out to our local enterprise uh, office. Um, so we know companies can apply by going to localenterprise.ie forward slash green. What happens after they submit their application? How long do I have to wait before I hear back? And what are the next steps? Um, well, we, we, we have a great track record of turnaround quickly, Greg. So we'll get into our office uh, within a couple of days. It'll be looked at and assessed. And then in due course, the client will be will be contacted. Um, as I say, if they're not eligible and for some reason, I think we will try and help them through our other mentoring program. So we work them that we'll try and make them eligible, that we'll work them up over a gradual time phase or whatever it might be. So we have lesser mentoring. So we could give a three hour mentoring session. So it doesn't technically have to be at the full two days, but ideally, you know, just the green for micro is a two full day with a, a green professional. So, you know, we, we yeah, always think we, we, professional. Yeah. Sorry, Joe. Um, another question that, that's come in a few times is, is, you know, um, you know, how do I get matched up with my consultant? You know, do, do, do I do, do you do a point one for me? And uh, how do you match me up? Yeah, we're, we're primarily the, the template we're moving is the green directory, which is the enterprise Ireland green directory. Okay. Each local enterprise office. So most have a, a green a consultant. We refer them to the green directory, which is the Enterprise Ireland Green Directory, and there's a very, very broad level of expertise there, so expansive expertise. So you will always get uh, identify a consultant there with your needs, uh, Greg, uh, uh, through that directory, and then we can help appoint them to, to, to the company uh, through the local enterprise office. Super stuff. So, uh, so, so we're 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 we're, ma we're matched up uh, in the right area. And again, if we look at the the uh, the green the local enterprise I green site, if we visit that there, there's the the, the full video of the launch, including uh, Leo's talk. Uh, there's all the details on what green for micro is. There's case studies, and again, this is the button that I'll be pressing is how to apply, and this will literally just uh, just take us through um, how we can how we can we can click to download, but not print our application form and start our process. Absolutely, absolutely fantastic stuff. So that's how the consultant or mentor is picked. What I might do. Um, just as we kind of wrap wrap things up, Joe, I might bring Kathleen back in here as well, and uh, we'll, we'll 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 serve up a couple of questions that, that have come in. Uh, Pascal's also said something very interesting in um, uh, to me there a second ago, and I'm going to actually ask him about it in a minute. So don't go anywhere, uh, Pascal. But some of the questions that came came in here is, um, and we've covered a lot of this, um, but. Um, 
I this this person says I have three employees. Am I eligible? So the answer is yes. It's up to yeah. ten. Yeah. So so just 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 to make sure. Um, um, it says, uh, what what steps can I take to reduce my carbon foot footprint? Um, I am a construction business. Now, I know we've discussed a bit of that, but what, what answer would you give to that question? Kathleen, do you want to take that in regards, maybe? Um, yeah, well, I suppose the first step is to kind of understand, okay, you know, what, what your baseline is, so where you are at the moment. So, you know, um, so if you were just to say, you know, to perhaps to focus on, if I'm thinking construction business, you're, you're focusing on maybe materials you use or the, you know, the, the energy that you use. So, um, so to, uh, I can't imagine you probably use that much water, but perhaps focus on the energy and, and the material side of it. Look at your baseline, understand where you are at the moment. Um, and then you can actually kind of like see, can you set, you know, find out then, you know, what are the opportunities, what changes that you can make. So some changes might be low cost and you can implement straight away and others then might actually you know be higher cost and, and you know might take a bit more work to do so but just to actually kind of find out okay what are the opportunities and put a plan in place and targets in place so that you would actually you know that you would actually follow this plan yeah, yeah. So the is, yeah. and the seed is planted great even the fact that he's even thinking about this now is you know that's fantastic one of the local guys we've come across over the last while is a guy that wants to introduce hemp as hemp as a building as in building construction making hemp blocks and hemp insulation all that kind of stuff so there's a whole array of green products coming on stream for the construction industry so the the, the contractor could encourage to use you know as say renewable sources for for build make his buildings and architects are specializing in a uh, looking at green friendly materials and and you know so there's a demand in the marketplace for that yeah no absolutely so even actually the green for micro application form is a great starting point if you actually if you actually download that and start to fill it out you'll start to figure out how you can potentially address your uh, your carbon footprint regardless of what your industry is and um, there was a question from peter mccrane um which, which joe joe i'm sure can answer here is simple question does the client fill in the form and submit to the local enterprise office or is 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 there a, an apply via natural national portal? So essentially, how do I submit my application? Uh, Peter wants to know. Good question. Yeah, t he can submit it through his own local enterprise office. That 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 structure will be in place under submit.com. Yeah, the, the, the okay. application. Yeah. yeah, brilliant, great stuff. Thanks for that, Peter. Someone also asked, what is Green Start, and what other uh, enterprise Ireland supports are there too? Yeah, so um, Enterprise Ireland um, has two supports at the moment, a Green Start and a Green Plus, and we've actually developed a new support similar to the Green for Micro, it's called a Climate Action Voucher. But the Green Start is a seven-day support to get an expert in, in uh, to you know carry out similar activities that we've carried out here, but in a greater level of detail. So that's that's the actual seven, uh, green, green Start support. And the Green Plus support is a much larger support, so really going into a, a deeper level. So you know if you wanted to implement perhaps you know a national uh, an international standard or, or a framework so there are supports yeah that are available for um you know enterprise ireland client companies there the green stars and the green plus Okay, so so if we go to Enterprise Enterprise Ireland, we we can even if we yeah. type in Green Start, we can find all the details that we yeah. we potentially need there. No, that's yeah. fantastic. Um, and so, someone else someone else asked, uh, I think, as I think Pascal mentioned, um, you know, what is what is Origin Green? Now I know uh, that's a board be a be a initiative, and I might actually bring Pascal in there. So someone was asking there, Pascal, what what was Origin Green was their question. So tell us about uh, what Origin Green is and and how it can help your your green footprint. Yeah, so Origin Green, it's run by Board Bia. Um, it's a pioneering uh, food and drink sustainability program, and it helps you set out like um, achievable sustainability targets. So you have. KPIs for various different aspects for us. So the heat recovery is a big one in ours. Um, so that, you know, what I was talking earlier about the oven um, producing heat, what can we do? Um, what what benefits can we get from the, the heat coming out the flue, out the chimney flue? Um, so getting a, a heat recovery system in place. So that's that's one of our, our goals in the five-year plan. Um, 
the packaging, the food waste, or, you know, like you don't have to have all the bells and whistles in your plan. You keep it as simple as you can. And, you know, Origin Green, the, you're assigned a mentor from Borbia. They keep in contact with you. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're ready for verification the next week or so. Um, so, you, you know, you make the plan as simple as you can and you just implement the changes as you go along then. Um, but that's the thing about writing down a plan. At least you know what you're striving towards, what you need to achieve. Um, and there's just a structure for, for that with the Origin Green. I mean, stuff. I, I, I don't I, I don't want to smell burning sourdough, uh, Pascal. I know. No, got... it's it's at the stage where it has to be turned every hour on the yeah. hour. So it's like a, it's like having an extra few babies. So it is this sourdough. So yeah. um, I have a market tomorrow, and I have to get it turned pretty soon. <laughs> I, let, I, let you, I don't want to be responsible. I don't want to be responsible. <laughs> Pascal, thank you so much for joining us. Go no and uh, turn that sourdough. Thanks so no much. Problem. You're more than welcome. Thanks. See you all. Thank you. Bye bye. I mean, last, the last question in uh, in, and I think we've covered this, and then we're, then we're going to wave a teary goodbye, folks. But um, and this is very much for you, Joe. But um, can you explain exactly from kind of the process? So, what does my mentor do? So, obviously, I apply for the Green First Start program. I get approved. What does my mentor actually do with me? Well, depending on what sector you might identify as your opportunity or what, what you as your priority, the mentor just it makes contact with you and have a general discussion. The mentor will just see then a guards doing a two day report and looking, gathering information in your business, seeing where is your starting point, what your objectives are, where he or she identifies opportunities in that business in relation to what you regard as your priority. So at the end of the two days, that mentor then will compile a report, a report that gives regards where you are at the moment and where they identify opportunities for you going forward. So you take that report on and you either act on it or you can say, well, listen, that, that identifies opportunity or to build on those opportunities. So there's no uh, condition or compilation to, to do anything apart from take it, taking the evidence and information, really, you know. Super. But we think it, the beauty about this, Greg, is that you have nothing to lose by engaging with it. You know, as I say, there's no condition to implement the recommendations or thing, but it's just thought provoking. Get it on board. Look at the opportunities, as we all discussed here this afternoon. So, please, I encourage and you. I think, for, yeah. I think for most companies starting out, and if they are starting and haven't done anything in this space, the first few activities that I outlined are probably where people will focus on. So, as Joe said, identifying what are the opportunities, you know in resource savings, cost savings, and emission savings. And then the consultant will, will provide you with this kind of register of opportunities, it's called, and you can put a plan then in place. So as well as looking at the opportunities, it's the, the important part, I suppose, is the plan and the framework in place so that you can have continuous monitoring then of your of your resources. And um, so for a lot of companies, if they really are just kind of starting out in this space, that might be the first place that they'll actually look. Others then by nature of their product or service which is by sustainable in its very you know nature might actually want to look or at the stage where they're actually looking at the environmental impact of the product or service but i think the first three activities are there for a lot of companies might be the, the starting point yeah brilliant stuff guys i really appreciate your time today this has been a very very special lunch and learn uh, it sounds like the uh, uh the pilot scheme uh, green for micro is an absolute no-brainer it's definitely something to check out so again it's localenterprise.ie forward slash green download but don't print the form out fill it out contact the local enterprise office your local one if you have any questions or concerns on the particular question and um i didn't realize i was surrounded by 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 Leitrim people. So obviously, you yeah. know, Mr. Leitrim. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we have Pascal based in Leitrim. And Kathleen was telling me the cheese from Leitrim. So mm -hmm. I feel like the, 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 it must be the greenest place in Ireland. There's so, no better that, Greg. Totally yeah. unspoiled, environmentally friendly. What can I say? <laughs> That's it. This this, uh, this this tourism broadcast has been brought to you by Joe Lowe. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, guys, I'm going to leave everyone okay. to say thank you so much, Kathleen. Thank you so thank much, you. Joe. Thanks a million for inspiring us, Pascal. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave everyone with the Green for Micro video, which we saw at the very beginning, and hopefully we'll see you soon. Take care and thank you so much, everyone. Thanks, Greg. Thank you. Bye. Bye.